Across the Asia-Pacific region, ethnic communities are associated with a diversity of cultural and national heritage. If this heritage is well managed, it can contribute to achieving sustainability not only in an economic sense, but also in terms of social and environmental sustainability. In Thailand, UNESCO has been working with various partners to empower ethnic communities, especially youth, in heritage management as a part of the country's sustainable development. Thailand is a multicultural nation with minority ethnic communities accounting for almost 10% of the population. It is home to a wide array of linguistic families, diverse heritage sites, and countless forms of living heritage and indigenous ways of life. At the same time, in terms of biological diversity, Thailand ranks in the top tier within Southeast Asia. It has over 15,000 plant species, accounting for 8% of the world's total. Forests cover a third of this land. The country has a vast network of national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, and other terrestrial, coastal, and marine areas. The three natural world heritage properties in Thailand include Thung Yai Hui Pa Kang Wildlife Sanctuaries, inscribed in 1991, Dong Phaya Yen Khao Yai Forest Complex, inscribed in 2005, and Gan Gajan Forest Complex, inscribed just in 2021. Thailand's rich heritage can contribute immensely to the country's achievement of the Sustainable Development Goal. This includes harnessing the heritage of ethnic communities around the country. For example, indigenous knowledge about agroecology can support food security among ethnic communities. Know-how in traditional medicines from local herbs can improve health. Heritage can also contribute to quality education and decent work. Cultural traditions that bond people together are the bedrock for sustaining communities that have existed alongside natural heritage both on land and below water for centuries. So what are the present day's challenges? Managing Thailand's biodiversity and cultural diversity faces some challenges. As the country's development has accelerated, biodiversity has decreased. From 1961 to 2009, Terrestrial forest coverage dropped from 53.35% to 32.1%. The shrinking habitats have resulted in the loss of indigenous flora and fauna. At the same time, various development pressures have also affected cultural diversity. Urbanization, industrialization, new agricultural techniques, standardized education, and increasingly commoditized economy. Ethnic communities around the country have lost touch with their traditional ways of life over the past few decades. Know-how about living in forests or coastal areas hasn't been handed down. Many young people have left their homes for better opportunities outside. Traditional systems of natural resource use and governance are not fully recognized under the legal and regulatory frameworks. Restricted access to land and resources has made many ethnic communities unable to support their families or remain self-reliant. The erosion of cultural diversity has had an impact on biodiversity as well. The loss of knowledge, skills, and customary practices about agriculture and natural resource management has taken its toll on biodiversity, including in protected areas. Areas of high cultural diversity are often areas of high biological diversity. UNESCO and the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity have called upon countries to recognize and harness the interlinkage between biological diversity and cultural diversity. Safeguarding biological diversity and cultural diversity can build resilience against natural and human-induced changes. Cultural groups have a vital role in maintaining and managing biodiversity. The World Heritage Convention, one of the most universally adopted international laws, highlights the role of communities. It calls for a national government to recognize communities as a main actor in the conservation and management of heritage sites. Communities must provide their free, prior, and informed consent and gain benefits from the World Heritage nomination. In a similar way, communities are also at the heart of the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage, according to UNESCO's 2003 convention. Today, 
Many countries, including Thailand, emphasize local communities' engagement and empowerment in managing both cultural and natural heritage. Thailand's 2017 constitution supports the sustainable development of ethnic groups and communities under Article 33. 70 and 92. The 2019 National Parks Act now gives great support to the livelihood of people living in the parks, like collecting seasonally renewable natural resources. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment has integrated indigenous and local knowledge in its national ecosystem assessment of coastal and marine areas. UNESCO and partners are working with ethnic communities. To support an inclusive approach to cultural and natural heritage management, which integrates indigenous knowledge and local practices with the modern governance system, this inclusive approach to heritage management can help us reach the five Ps of the Sustainable Development Goals: people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. In other words, we can sustain people's cultural identity, save the environment. Improve livelihoods and reduce conflicts among different groups of people at the same time. We can call this approach win-win-win-win-win, right? Inspiration for supporting cultural diversity and biodiversity together. Well, UNESCO is not the only organization that sees the importance of supporting cultural diversity and biodiversity together through an inclusive approach with ethnic community. Many organizations around the world have shown us how indigenous knowledge and local stewardship can complement modern heritage management practices with win-win results. UNESCO works with UNDP and UN Foundation to. Support local communities around the world to care for their heritage properties through the Compact Project, which stands for Community Management of Protected Areas for Conservation. Local people in places like the Puerto Princesa Subterranean River National Park in the southern Philippines improve environmental protection along with their quality of life. In India, a shared governance model for biodiversity and community revival allowed Manas Wildlife Sanctuary to be removed. From the list of world heritage in danger, illegal poachers were transformed into forest protectors. The new approach reduced poverty and improved conservation. In Australia, the protection of the bush beam cultural landscape world heritage property combines indigenous protected areas management plans with national laws. Both the Western science and the Aboriginal knowledge are used in conserving the site, one of the world's oldest aquaculture system. Which has been maintained by the Gundich Mara people for over six thousand years. In Thailand, the Jompa project introduced joint management in protected areas. The Department of National Parks worked closely with local communities in demarcating land use, developing common rules on how to use natural resources, reforestation, installing forest fire boundaries and check dams. And setting up community funds, Thailand has also officially recognized living heritage of its ethnic communities that is related to sustainable natural resource use. This includes kushui or rotational farming by Karen people and gabang or traditional houseboat culture of Morgan people. These have been included in the national inventory of intangible cultural heritage. These inspiring examples show us how inclusive management of heritage involving ethnic communities can give us better natural resource management and more biodiversity, sustain well-being and cultural identity of ethnic communities. And reduce conflicts in our society. What can we do to manage our heritage better? So, given all the progress that has been made and the challenges that remain, how can we strengthen heritage management policies to more effectively link social, economic, and environmental sustainable development goals within the context of diverse ethnic communities? How can we promote an Asian approach to support the interlinked relationship between nature and culture? How can we improve policy coherence among different line ministries for governing terrestrial, coastal, and marine resources in a more inclusive manner? Two main lines of recommendations are proposed: strengthen the laws and regulations for inclusive heritage management. And empower communities. First, government authority can take the lead to ensure that laws and regulations can enable 
more meaningful involvement of ethnic communities in contributing to sustainable heritage management. We also need regulatory mechanism for conflict resolution among stakeholders, including ethnic communities. We can look to promising models such as the Declaration of Special Culture Zones in Thailand or setting up local level co-management committees that involve government, civil society, and ethnic communities in protected areas and heritage sites. To put these laws and regulations into practical operation, we should replicate and mainstream good practices from various projects for inclusive heritage management. For the second main line of recommendation, a wide range of organizations can contribute to empowering ethnic communities, especially youth, to be involved in sustainable heritage management. There are so many ways to do this. We can strengthen representative bodies of ethnic peoples at various levels. We can support ethnic communities to conduct research inventory and documentation about local knowledge and practices related to the environment and natural resource management. We can work with youth in transmitting and applying local knowledge to manage the environment and natural resources around them. Educators can include content about ethnic heritage and life ways into formal, non-formal, and informal education.